Hey folks, it's Ridgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here in Boulder Canyon. I am just hosing off the tractor right here, and I will also hose off the sea drill. Then we will go and make sure that the last of the fertilizer is put onto the field correctly, because he's just running down across there about to go and do what looks like the last run. I can just see him making his way up across there. We want to do just a little tiny strip across the bottom of the grass field. There's a little bit there that needs to be done. So I want to make sure that that does get done while the tractor's down there. Plus there's a bit down there that we want to tidy up anyway. Right, that's done. So I'm going to leave that one where he is. And we're going to skip down over here. We'll have to manually go and do the bit on the field. Then we can come back up and, we, well, we'll probably just manually do all of it. Uh, we're not going to manually do anything because we've run out of fertilizer. So we will have to get some fertilizer first. So we look through here on this one. Let's get rid of the needs line bit. I got a bit there that needs to do, a bit there, and then we got the loop round there that we need to do as well. This one will at least get to the bottom of the field down here. 50 liters of fertilizer left. It's not doing too bad, I suppose. Right, I'll stop that one there, and then I'm going to bring him along over here. Let's see if we can actually do this ourselves. Uh, well, do this ourselves. Let's see if we can actually get the field done here. I don't know if we're going to have enough fertilizer just to do this bit. So it's only the bit where the plow ran. The rest of it doesn't need to be touched. It won't accept fertilizer anyway. It is just not going to accept it at all. It's unacceptable. And... That onto there. Right, so there's that bit done there and probably shouldn't go bouncing down across there. It's not going to be very good for the tractor. That one is ready and raring to go for our next run up through there. We will do that in a minute. I need to get... I'll load it right up with fertilizer. I may as well. We may as well fill the thing right to the brim. I'm wondering if I should do the... Um, herbicide now or just leave that for a bit leave it until at least we've got um, the weeds coming through hang on I want to lower you down and take that cover off like that and then load it all the way back up again like that and then pick it up put the cover back on I'll start spreading from here I go around this way we just go straight in here and start spreading from here and go on round the stone. Do these little bits here. Then we could do the run down across the field down there and just tidy up the last little bit. So I think we will just leave the herbicide until the weeds come through or do something. Because otherwise we've got to manually do it. If I wait until the weeds have come through, then we can set the hired help going. And we don't have to go and nurse it through. Because let's be honest, whilst it's quite cool being able to do the herbicide, and it's a nice change and everything, it's still a redonkulously boring job to go and do because it is so painfully slow. So I don't really want to do that. I don't really want to do mess around with uh, painfully slow things. Why have I got one little bit there that's not been... or doesn't need fertilizer? Did we drive over the crop there or something? quite sure. Maybe we did. Maybe we drove over the crop on that little bit. I don't remember now. Um, anyway, we want to... Yeah, we'll, we'll wait until it comes through because then we're not... We don't have that painfully slow, dull job of having to manually go and spray weed killer across all of the field, which I don't really want to do. I'd rather get on with doing some more of these trees. The, the sooner we can get these trees out, the sooner we can get on with the you know, fairly slow, dull job of ploughing up the new field. Although we're going to have to do all the stumps first. And I'm actually thinking that maybe we should go along and do the stumps first because there's a load of stumps up the top, isn't there? And we've not done those. I kept meaning to, and I've still not gotten up there and gone... Or, or did I? Now that I think about it, I'm not sure if... I, I'm not actually sure. I don't remember if I've done them or not. I think I'd, I... I don't think I've done them. I think they're still waiting to be done. But, yeah, now that I think about it, I'm absolutely 100% not entirely sure. So that's going to require a bit of investigation. I got one little bit of fertilizer to do here, and then that is all of the fertilizing done. We've got a field of oats in the ground, ready and raring to go. We've just got to wait for some weeds to show up so that we can deal with that bit. And, yeah, job's done. Job's a good one. 
And, yeah, tree stumps. Oh, well, there's definitely some tree stumps up there. I can see them over in the distance from here. So we will go and have a little go with some of them. This one here, as I'm now finished with it, I'm not going to load it back up again. I'm going to bring it back over this way, and I'm going to put it in the shed beside the herbicide sprayer. I'm probably going to want this tractor before I want that herbicide sprayer. So I'm going to lower that one down there. And I'm going to leave that one there. I am going to get the herbicide sprayer out of the shed so that we've got it ready. But then I'll end up unhitching it again, I expect. Although I suppose I could just... Oh, okay, it's completely full. I was expecting to have to go and buy some more herbicide. But it looks like we've, we're one step ahead of the game on that front. So that one can come up over here. And it can then wait. I've got... Other, there's still so much more that I need to do, though. i got stuff I need to put away. i I got to put the rake away. I don't know where I'm going to put that one. I can't remember where I stored it. Because i got the rake and I've got this one to put away. Let's get things tidy, shall we? All right, we, I know that quite a lot of you get annoyed with me. Because I leave things just out in the yard. And I go rushing on with the next job. Um... So I need to I need to be a little bit tidier, don't I? So we'll, we'll do that. We'll be tidy. We'll we'll drop that one there, and we'll run in this side, right there, and we'll service that one. I want to repair. There we go. Back out of there, and then run over here. We'll put this one in the shed next to the mowers. Oh no! Wait a minute. That one goes in next to the mowers, doesn't it? I think that one goes next to the mowers. So where's this one go? Oh, of course. We have the fertilizer spreader right there. And then you have the herbicide sprayer next to it. And this one went in... Well, this one went beside them. That, that Those two went together. So I'm going to have to bring the fertilizer spreader out again. I won't for a minute. Bring that round like that. Uh, let me try and straighten up a bit. Bring it round a little bit. And then... Right, that's better. In there. Is that right? Sort of right. Uh, there, right. Okay, that's that's looking pretty good. I think we can go with that. And then we want to get this one over here cleaned, serviced, and we will put that one away as well. Uh, just having a quick drink. Uh, yeah, we want to get this one hosed off, and then we can wash it. Uh, wash it after we hose it off. No, we want to hose it off, and then we want to repair it. We want to make sure it's all nice and clean. And all nice and fully serviced. And then we'll put this one away in the shed as well. That is everything put away. Then I will go and get the stump grinder. And we'll go up the hill. And we will try and grind away the stumps that we've got kicking around up the top up there. Just going to go over and have a look at our egg boxes here. Right, there's no eggs in them at the moment. By the look of it. Otherwise it would have shown up on that thing. I th well, I think it would have done. Uh, the sheep, I did want to check the sheep a minute. Right, there's fertilizer, that's all done. There's a little bit up there, that doesn't matter. Uh, I want to have a look in the sheep. There we go. It's now every nine and a quarter hours, and we get another one in four hours' time. So that's that's speeding up now, it's speeding up quite nicely. We'll buy more sheep when we can so that we can get a full pen. Ideally, what I'd like is two full pens. Because the amount of wool that we'll be getting from two pens is going to be absolutely brilliant. Now, these pallets over here, I'm wondering if they're only working the middle four pallets. Whether six, uh, eight pallets is too many. We could have been a little bit greedy on that. I, you know, I suppose we could put a line of extra pallets just long. But then that's, that's also being... I think six might be the, oh, like the, the, the main way to do it. I think that might be the only way to do it, actually. We'll, we'll see what happens with those. Not quite sure. I think we may have... What is going on with this? It does this every now and then. Like it suddenly goes really weird. And it's, it, wouldn't, it doesn't normally do that. It's gone and done this really strange thing as though it's um, got, gone... Yeah, look. Look at that. It's, it's like it suddenly decided that it's really, really heavy. Or it's unfolded. Or it's got something some kind of thing on it that shouldn't be on it and it does make life really you know what I'm not actually going to go and try and back that one into the shed not if it's doing 
No, if it's got weirdness like that going on with it, I'm not going to try and put it into the shed. Because I think it's just going to end up causing us problems. So instead, what I will do is we'll bring this one over and we'll park this one in front of the barn. And we'll just say that it's got a tarp over it instead. So that one's going to be put there and have a tarp put over it. Just like that. And we'll leave it there because that's... There's some strangeness going on with that that I'm not quite sure about. And we've, we've had this. I mean, we've had it a little bit with the plough right there, but mostly... Well, actually, you know, it was, it was the plough that we got it mostly from when we had issues with it falling off of the, um, the trailer, wasn't it? it? It fell off of the trailer that we had on our... Uh, the, the one that the shop owns, the one on the truck. The, that, that, that particular trailer, it fell off of that one. And it seemed like that there was much weirdness. Much, much weirdness. And it was very, very strange. And I'm not quite sure why it did it. Right, let's start you up over here. Get that one fired up and going. Hopefully this will actually remove all of the stumps. We've got my adjusted stump grinder here. So I'm hoping that it will go through and remove everything. Like that. And then I will come over this way and get that one right there. And then I will come round. I may have... Oh, no. Well, I can see a tree stump over the there. I, I can see a tree stump over the other side already. Um, so, no. I haven't gotten rid of most of the tree stumps up here. There is a boatload of tree stumps up here. Ooh. Okay. I just... What's actually happened is I've cut the bottom of that tree stump there... And now I've got the tree stump. It's, it's just cut the bottom. And so now I've actually got it like a, a, a log on there instead. So I'm hoping that by bringing that over like that, it will... It has. It has. It's, it's removed all of it. It's all gone now. That one there, though, is now being weird. Why are you being weird? Right. That got rid of it. That one was being a bit odd. Some of these are a little bit strange. Uh, there's, there's strange things are happening with some of these. Uh, they're doing all right at the moment. They're doing all right at the moment. That little tree stump in there I'm going to leave for now. We'll, we'll end up getting that one another time. I don't want to get too close because of just how like deep this can go. I don't want to get too close to some of the, like, the other trees because I'm a little bit concerned that it's going to end up like cutting the tree off. In theory, it shouldn't be able to do it, but... Yeah, it, there is every chance, because I, I didn't really know what I was doing with the numbers on this mod. So I, I, I went and changed everything round. Um, and it's produced the desired effect, but the desired effect may be a little bit rambunctious at times. I mean, you've seen that. We, we just cut off the bottom of that tree, um, the, the tree stump. So it ended up giving me a piece of wood that was maybe a foot long, a foot and a half long, possibly. And... It instantly turned it into wood chips. That was pretty instant getting rid of that one. So if it's done it with one, then it would do it with others as well. I'm going to drive along here. There's there's something there. Is that a tree stump in the ground? That is a tree stump in the ground, I think. I want to go forward over that. Just slowly-ish. There. Right. Whatever it was, it's now gone. If it was a tree stump or if it was just a little bit of wood that was left on the ground. I don't really know. But whatever it was, it is now gone and completely taken care of. We don't need to worry about it. And by removing the tree stumps, I am now getting closer and closer to the bit where we're going to need to get the whole um, tree planter thing going. Because the tree stumps, still being in the ground, there's still like a little bit of life in it. The roots are still there. They're still holding everything together. Um... So, you know, there's, there's no dangerous serious erosion just yet because we're, we're still sort of removing the trees. But we are going to need to plant more trees along the top of this bank. I've been reminded of this a number of times now. So we are going to have to make absolutely certain that we remove, uh, that we don't remove, that we go and plant a line of trees along here just so that we don't get a load of erosion. We don't end up with a whole load of fines coming in from various governmental departments and officials and, and things like that. Because we, we, we could really do without that kind of hassle. That's not the sort of thing that we want to have to deal with. It's expensive. It's, um, 
It's also time consuming while you're dealing with all the litigation and stuff and quite frankly it's, it's not something that we want to have to put up with. So all we got to do in order to make sure that we don't have to put up with it is just go and put just, just a few, just a few, we don't have to get loads of them and go and plant a few trees. However, we're not allowed to lease the tree planter so we're going to have to buy a tree planter to do it and then we'll get a, a, a pallet. Well actually what I'll do is I'll get the tree planter and I'll load a pallet of um, trees, uh, the, the tree saplings, onto the tree planter when we've got the thing back in uh, over at the dealership. So we're not going to need to worry about any more than that. One pallet of trees will be sufficient. That's all we're going to need because we'll plant a line along here. And we won't need to worry about any more. We just need a line along here. I mean, if we go and take out more trees that way, then, yeah, we'll have to plant a few more over that way. And so then we've got the tree planter with the trees in it. it, it it's sort of ready to roll. And once if the trees grow fast enough that we can harvest them before we finish up our time here, then we plant another line of trees to replace the ones that we just harvested. I think that could work. Because the harvested trees, we, you get quite a lot of timber out of those. Right? You, you do get a reasonable return on the trees that you go and plant. There's a nice lot of timber does come off of them. I'm going to just back up to that stump there. Get rid of it. And then there's one stump down over here that I want to take down. Slow down, slow down, slow down. Too fast. Even this magic stump grinder can't take him off that quickly. And... Whiz back up here. At least we haven't driven the tree harvester into the river. I do feel that that is a step in the right direction because those of you who watched the first ever hardcore series that I did, which was in FS17, uh, yeah, very early on, we leased a tree harvester and it went into the river. In, it, it fell into the lake and that was the end of said tree harvester. That was also the end of us being allowed to lease anything ever. We weren't allowed to lease anything after that. It was all game over. No more leasing. Which was unfortunate for us. It really was. It was very, very unfortunate for us. Because it, um, it, it meant that we weren't able to use the tree harvester again for quite some time until we were able to buy the thing. And we had to cut down a lot of trees by hand. And that took a while. Although those of you who have been following the series from the beginning will probably be familiar with cutting trees down by hand by this point. Because we've done that quite a bit, haven't we? <laughs> we have done that quite a bit by now. Right, I'm getting a little bit fed up with driving around cutting these up. And there's a load of logs up here. I forgot about those. We've still got a load of logs up here ready to go. So I will just... I'll take out a few more of these stumps. I'll just kind of fill in this little area here. Right, I'll go and get that one there. There's some along the top. I'm going to leave those. And the other side of the logs there, I'm going to leave them as well. Because I don't want to risk um, like getting rid of those. I don't want to risk the stump grinder magically making them all disappear in a puff of smoke. Or wood chips, whichever you like. Um, so what we will do is just finish up. Oh, just finish up. There is a load of tree stumps in this little bit. I was just going to do just this little bit right here. So I thought, you know, there'd be maybe another dozen tree stumps and that would be it. There is more than a dozen in here. There is way more than a dozen in here. There's three right there in quick succession. Which I'll take down. I will leave the other one above it. I'm not taking all of these out. Definitely not. And then I will spin round like this. And get that one there. Let's back you up a bit. Like that, and then I will go over this way and head down here. Oh, there it is. I, I knew there was another one there. There's a little tiny one right there that I'd almost missed. And then we come down here. We've got a couple here. There's one right there that I'm going to take off. Just back up and get that one a second. There, like that. And then much the same down here. Run down through there. And then spin round like this. Up through. We'll head across these two. There's four or five left now. And then I'm going to go and park this one up. We're not, well, actually, I don't need to park. Go and park. Oh. <laughs> it's doing the whole thing with the, the logs again. I'm taking out the bottom of these right here. 
If I can move this around a little bit, it will take out the rest of that. But look, we've got a tree stump. It's gotten caught in the back. There, we've cut off the bottom of the tree stump and then it's lifted it up and it is kind of wedged right in there. That's, that's not what it's supposed to do. How am I supposed to get that out of there? That's, that's not supposed to happen. <laughs> that's not very helpful, you know. Oh, there we go. Right. Now, if I lift it up again, bring it forward. See, it's instantly gotten rid of it. That's how fast this one operates. So it's instantly getting rid of those. Which is, you know, it, it seems like it would be really cool, but actually it's starting to be a little bit of a... Well, that bit's not being a nuisance, but whilst it seems like it would be really cool, if we go too close to any of those logs over there, we're going to end up like they're going to magically disappear as well. And that's the bit that is not quite so cool. That's the bit that we don't want. And I got another one. I should have... I should have known. You know, if I was to stop being lazy and I was actually to... Move this one around... Like, move the angle of it around a little bit. I could probably not do that quite so much. But it's because I'm being lazy. Right, let's grab you there. Put you in like that. And boom, it's gone. Just like that. It's the end of that one. Okay. Are there any more tree stumps in this little bit? I've gone round and round and round now. I think I have got everything. It looks like I've picked everything out of it. Doesn't look like there are any more. Just lift that up a little bit, I guess, and bring it over like that. There, I'll get this one right here. And there is another... Oh, actually, there's a few down here. I did say this was all I was going to do, but we've got so many tree stumps here. I would at least like to get rid of the worst of them, because otherwise we're going to have to do all of the tree stumps at once. And that's going to be even duller than doing it this way round. So I'd, I'd, I'd like to at least get rid of what we can recognize here as tree stumps. And then we can go on and do a little bit more other work. There's one right there, a really small one. Need to get that one, otherwise I will end up missing it. And that is going to be a jolly nuisance when we come back to doing things later on. There, it's gone now. That's good. Uh, right, I don't see any more for a minute. Not little ones or bigger ones. I think. That'll do. Let's stop you right there. You can stop for a second. And we will run down here and we can start cutting some more trees. So I want to run along the bottom of this line here. I want to take off as many of these trees. You're still running. Okay. That's surprising. Um, I'll bring that one over to there. I normally record these episodes one per day for a few days uh however this time i'm not going to make any secret of it because of the week off um i'm recording all three of this week's episodes all in one day it's saturday for me the day after doing the live stream you probably figured that much out because of uh, my comments yesterday about our beautiful presents that we got over there that were given to me during the live stream um so yeah, I'm, I'm doing all three of these episodes back to back, one after the other. Record and then stop and then record. And it's it, if I was doing this like the, the way I do all of my other videos now, where I just record the whole lot all in one go and then splice it up in the editing, it would be a lot faster. It would definitely be a lot faster. Um, that way of doing the videos and recording has meant that I am able to get a lot more. But as soon as I started doing that, I was doing three videos a day. As soon as I started doing that, I was able to start producing an extra video every single day of the week. There's so much time it's given me, um, which meant that I was able to start the Factorio series. And I know that it's not for everybody, but I am absolutely loving doing that Factorio series. And I know that there are some of you who have watched every single episode so far. I'm on episode 250. Well, actually, truth be told, I've got here at home ready to go i've done a little bit of extra recording um ready for the week off but i've also sort of recorded a little bit more than i really needed to on that anyway so i'm actually up to episode 263 i got episode 260 i, I uploaded today on the saturday um episode 250 i've got uh 263 
is also ready to go. So I, I, I'm quite a ways ahead on the Factorio series. It's because I get into it. I love that game. I really do. That game is one that I play quite a lot in my spare time at the moment. Um, and I, st I get onto that one. I start recording and I just forget about time going by. And then I look at the clock and I realize I've been recording for like three hours straight. Um, and like, oh, yeah, oops. Um, the only downside to that is if I ever get a power cut after like two and a half hours of recording, it means I'm going to have to do the whole lot again because the power cut is not going to allow the video to finish. So I, I do need to maybe at least like divide the recordings up a little bit so that I don't have an issue with that. Otherwise, I've got to record the whole thing again. Um, so yeah, that, that is something that I'm aware of and I, I'm sort of thinking about. What I'm actually wanting to do is I want it, there's a special thing that you can get which protects against power cuts. And it is really awesome. It's a battery pack, a special battery pack. It's designed for protecting your work and stuff on a computer against a power cut. And what it does is you plug your um, computer into this and then you plug that into the wall, into the mains, and it, it just carries on normally. But when there's a power cut, what this thing does is a backup power supply. It will have 10 to 15 minutes of power on it. So you're not going to be able to just keep going regardless. But what you are going to do is you're not going to have your computer shut down because you've got the power coming from the battery. And it gives you just long enough to be able to save your work and shut your PC down properly. Then you can carry on and then you just got to wait for the power to come back on again. It's such an amazing and wonderful thing and quite frankly it's something that I've been looking at for a while that I would really really dearly love to get and it is on my to-do list to get one of those things because yeah it's it's amazing it's, it's a genuinely amazing piece of equipment and I think it's going to ultimately end up being a lifesaver I really do I think it's going to make a huge difference I mean, I'm going to be, hopefully, if all goes to plan, be getting a new PC soon anyway. Um, I don't quite know when it's going to be, but sometime in the next six months, I will be buying a new PC. Um, I've just got to get approved for the finance for it and then decide what I need to get. Because um, this computer, whilst it's good, it is an extremely good computer, I need to sort of upgrade things a bit so that I can start, re like, everybody is switching over to 4K, there's more and more stuff switching over to 4K, there's a lot of games able to do 4K now, so I kind of need to stay ahead of the game with this, um, whereas some people are getting into it, um, it doesn't necessarily mean I've got to go and do it, but it certainly is an advantage if I'm able to start uploading, uh, recording, editing and uploading all of my stuff in 4K. That would be a huge advantage to me. Um, and it would also be beneficial to everybody else as well. You would all get better quality videos. Um, or better quality options on your videos. Or you should do anyway if everything goes to plan. Uh, but in order to, be able to do that, i got to get a significant um, improvement on the PC that I have. So that I can... Because I, I, I don't just play the games... You know, like right here with the Farming Simulator, I'm not just playing this, remember. I've got a screen recorder that is currently recording everything, so the computer has not only got to be able to run the game well, it's also got to be able to run the screen recorder, which is one of the reasons I love the screen recorder I use. D3D Gear, um, you can get that one on Steam. I always run it through Steam. I've got something like 16,000 hours or something equally obscene on there. I posted a screen grab of it on um or actually it was a, just a picture i posted a picture on instagram uh, not that long ago of the number of hours that my d3d gear has done um on my according to my steam account and it's it's absolutely ridiculous there is a lot of hours that d3d gear has been running um it's, it's really, really good. It, I hardly get any system slowdown at all. I get very, very few issues with it in any way, shape, or form. In fact, about the only game that I've ever encountered any serious issues with it is the Prison Architect. And those of you who watched that series are probably aware that it, things are a little bit sort of twitchy on there. And 
I have tried everything. I've spoken to the devs of both Prison Architect and D3D Gear, and nobody's able to quite figure out what's causing it. So it's unfortunately, it sort of seems to be something that is to do with how Prison Architect is made and how D3D Gear runs, because there are a couple of other um, recording softwares that have a similar issue, but it doesn't look like there's anything that we can do about it. Um, but that's not causing system problems for me. I'm not, I'm not getting like serious issues with the system. And it's wonderful for not slowing my system down. D3D gear is absolutely amazing. And it also does now record in 4K, although I've never actually been able to test that because I don't have a 4K monitor. So I, I, I'm not really able to go and do that. Uh, that's on the to-do list. Um, the 4K, mo I'm not going to worry about 4K on this computer. So once, once I've got my upgrade, once that's done, once that's in the bag, I will then be starting to do everything in 4K. And that's going to be absolutely wonderful. But one of the things that I would like to get, going right back to how I started this conversation, one of the things I'd like to get to go alongside that is a uh, one of those battery backup things. Because I sort of figure that something like that... Um, that's like if, if I'm going to go and buy a new computer and, and monitor and, and stuff like that in order to like upgrade my system all the way through, then I may as well like get the fi if I if I'm financing it, then I may as well get the finance at the same time to do the, the, the battery backup thing, which quite frankly is getting to the point where it would be an essential, I think. It, I mean yes, I, I can sort of I could still get by without it. Um but it's getting to the point where it's, you know, you know, sometimes when you you you, you do just fine without things. You you absolutely you do just fine without them. But the the, the more type, why did I get a sudden blip like that? Was very weird. A sudden blip in sound, right? That was that was very strange. Um, you, you get to the point sometimes where things just kind of like change, um, and. It gets more and more where even though you've gone all this time without the thing in question, uh, life would certainly be made a lot simpler if you had the thing in question. Um, or it's sort of things could potentially happen without the thing that wouldn't happen at all with the thing. And the, the, the possibility of the thing happening certainly makes it worthwhile spending the money on the thing. Does that make any sense? So if I get a major power cut while I'm busy doing a whole load of recording, it does cause me a lot of problems. Regardless of what happens, it causes me a lot of problems. Re regardless of, like, it's always caused me problems. A power cut is a serious issue. Now, admittedly, I do not get power cuts very often. I'm very lucky where I live. Power cuts are very few and very far between, but they do happen. They do happen every now and then. You might get an electrical storm or just as any kind of storm or even just... Like we've had every now and then a fuse go in the local um, sort of transformer exchange type place. Um, and that causes problems as well. It is an absolute nuisance because it then means that I can't do anything. If I was able to save my work and shut it down, I'm not suddenly a few hours behind. I've had it happen while I've been recording time lapse. Now I record time lapse in one hour sessions. Um, although sometimes I lose track of time and I end up doing like an hour and a half to two hours all at once. So if you can imagine the frustration. You've just done an hour and a half of recording and the power goes out. Right, you can imagine the frustration on that. And that then I've got to go and do that all again. And that puts me right behind um, suddenly losing all of that time with the power cut and getting everything set up and so on. You lose a good few hours on it because then you've got to go and do those few hours again. And it really is like a, a, a real pain so that i want this battery thing Th this is what i'm looking at anyway that's enough about that that's not really anything to do with what we're doing here we've got enough trees so i'm just going to cut these two and then our next job will be to load up some trees and get them sold and then we'll come along and we'll clear the um the stumps as well i think once we've done the trees here but anyway, I have run out of time for today's episode. So if you've enjoyed this episode, then please hit down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. I am just going to let you see me cut down this final tree right here. That one right there. 
We will cut the final tree. There. Down he goes. And then we've got just those few. There aren't that many. There are not that many trees left. By the time we get through these here. And we take out that sort of clump over there. Most of the trees on the hill will be taken care of. That, that, that would be absolutely brilliant. That would be fantastic. So I'll bring you over to here and I'm going to stop you. Um, you're going to stop right there. Until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.